Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Rewind, Relive, and Review. We are doing a review of Episode 2 of The Book of Boba Fett. Let's get into it. Now this episode opens up with Finnick bringing the prisoner back to the palace. He refuses to answer any questions, and they throw him in the Rancor pit. Unbeknownst to him, there is no more Rancor. So they get him to talk, he confesses that he was hired by the mayor, and they take a trip to the mayor's domain. The mayor seems to be heavily guarded and also heavily confident, and he points out that there's more to it than him. He sends them back to the establishment where they were at the first episode, and he questions. Then we hear the sound of drums and an incoming envoy. The gang walks out, and it turns out that Jabba's two cousins, they called them the twins, a male and a female hut, are being carried towards them. They exchange words, but no violence. And I thought there would be some, especially after we see a giant, and when I say giant, I mean bigger than Chewbacca, Wookiee. This Wookiee looked like he was on steroids and ready to do some serious damage. Boba referred to him as one of the Hutt's gladiators. And the Hutt's leave, but the interesting thing in the exchange between Boba and Finnick, they made reference to he's not allowed to kill a Hutt. He has to get permission. That means that there's somebody even bigger than them as crime lords in the galaxy. Then we cut to the flashback, which takes up the majority of the episode. He's training with that tribe of the Tusken Raiders, learning to do more close quarter weapons combat. The group sees a train, and this train goes through their territory and shoots several members of the tribe. Later on, Boba sees a group of speeders going towards an establishment. That's when he forms a plan. He goes out to that establishment. Turns out to be a bar where the patrons look pretty nervous. It's kind of like a biker gang. They've taken over the establishment and scared all the people. But in comes Boba. And just like that episode of Mandalorian, he comes in and he wrecks shop. Next thing you know, he takes all of the speeders and they go back with him to the village where he trains the raiders how to use the speeders and forms a plan on getting that train. And of course it does through a very nicely shot chase scene. They take over the train, they stop it. But instead of taking prisoners or killing them, Boba warns the train passengers if they want to go through the territory of the Tusken Raiders, they must pay a fee. Wonder if that's going to play into a future episode. After he gives those terms, he sends them off in the direction of Anchorhead on foot. So after the Raiders are victorious, the chief gives Boba Fett a gift, which turns out to be a small lizard. And what's really freaky is it jumps inside Boba's nose and it kind of puts him in a walking trance. At first I thought he was hallucinating, but it turns out it was sending him on a quest. Because it's Tatooine, it's a very desert planet, but he makes out towards a singular area where there happens to be a tree. He breaks off a very long branch of the tree, brings it back to the tribe, it's inspected, and the lizard is removed. Because Boba completed his quest, they take him inside one of the huts, and he's given special robes, making him a member of the tribe, you'd say. Very ceremonial. And it is the robes that we see him in when we see him in the Mandalorian. What's more is, they use that tree branch to form his Gaddafi stick. And he's taught how to put all the pieces together, wood and metal, to make their unique fighting weapon. Then, continuing the ceremony, they do what seems to be a ceremonial warrior type dance with their weapons. First Boba and his trainer, and then one by one, all the tribesmen jump in. 
Now that concludes the episode, and a lot of people will probably believe that it's too slow-paced of an episode, it didn't have much information, but I think that they were going to bring it along at this pace anyway. I don't think that things will start to ramp up until the next episode. So look for episode three to be the one where the action goes up a notch. I believe that these flashbacks are intended so that we can see how he became who he is right now. Not just a bounty hunter, but a man with a purpose. And it also reminds me, I don't know if the younger crowd remembers or knows, but all of us of a certain age, remember that old David Carradine TV show? Kung Fu, where there was constant flashbacks which showed how he became who he was. I'm willing to bet we'll continually get flashbacks and it'll be something like that. In any case, I wasn't disappointed. I liked it. I see where it's going. Leave a comment. Let me know how you feel about it. And I'll be back next Thursday for episode three's review. Stay positive, stay blessed, I'll see you again.